Where are we going? In part three, we use what we have learned to begin answering the question in a more practical way. For example, we are going to the store is one use of the word. We are going to have a rough road ahead is another perfectly valid use. Here, we aim to frame the bigger picture of where the solar system is actually moving, combined with known natural events concurrently ongoing, and determine the number one effect of their combination. First, let's warm up with a much, much, much more macro scale view. Forget where we're going in the galaxy, let's look at galaxy clusters across the known universe. A group of scientists a few years ago began tracking and mapping the cosmos in a different way. They didn't want to know just where galaxy clusters were, but where they had been, and more importantly, where they are going. When they mapped the velocity profiles and where things are heading, they came up with a trail-based diagram that shows the general motion towards the Great Attractor, a superstructure known as Laniakea there, which has a sister group called the Perseus-Pisces Cluster. We are roughly in the middle, moving towards the Great Attractor, but it turns out that in 2017 their next release would reveal an even larger dipole structure with an even greater attractive cluster behind the Great Attractor, making the Great Attractor just the keyhole we are going through towards the big show. Indeed, there is a strange trend of the entire known universe from one point towards another. Not that this is precisely useful in your daily life or relevant to parts 1 and 2, but if you are getting yourself squared up with the cosmos and your place inside of it, might as well step back as well. Now, let's come back in to our solar system in the galaxy. We are in the process of coming out of a dense, magnetized cloud of 50 to 200 percent stronger magnetic field than would be expected in the interstellar medium. 17 years ago, it was determined that our total entry and exit timeline was around 50,000 years, with us having about 10,000 years left. Not a bad guess, but those numbers were not updated with the 2012 release you see here, and clearly, we don't have 20% of the way left to go. We are right on the verge of our exodus from the cloud now. In fact, it is likely most accurate to say we are coming out of it more and more every single day, and that will be true for at least the rest of our lifetimes. So as we exit the cloud, a magnetized bubble, we are entering the larger bubble, the one six times less dense than the local cloud out of which we are moving. It was carved out by numerous supernova, which blasted out most of the material within light years of our star, creating the local bubble with only sparse remnants inside. We know our bubble is the result of numerous events because it has multiple lobes, including one much harder to see off the top and behind. With the expanding shell long dispersed, our solar system will be left open in this bubble, outside of that magnetized cloud, where cosmic rays and electromagnetic radiation like X-rays and gamma rays will more easily penetrate to reach the sun's magnetic bubble. Compounding this increase in exposure is the fact that our sun's magnetic protective bubble is dropping in strength and that is expected to continue as well. This allows more entry of those waves and particles on top of that allowed by our exodus from the cloud in the first place. Now the sun has been very strong recently, stronger than it has been in about 11,000 years. This has provided a large amount of protection for the last century or so, but all evidence suggests that it is about to drop out hard in the coming decades with a lackluster return over the coming centuries that is almost certain to miss the mark set by the recent multi-millennium maximum. And the cosmic ray forecast based on that drop in solar activity alone presents uncharted territory in modern science. So to review, we are right now coming out of the grand solar maximum since the end of the glacial period. We are about to see a tremendous drop into grand solar minimum, followed by a very slow magnetic recovery that won't likely reach those same maximum levels for thousands of years, allowing for that uncharted territory of high cosmic ray flux. Now, as if uncharted territory in cosmic rays wasn't enough, and with us already leaving the larger magnetic cloud of protection, there is still one more magnetic shield to discuss our own, the magnetosphere of Earth. It protects our planet from the sun and those galactic and extragalactic sources of energy. Important note, it was recently discovered that the most powerful cosmic rays actually come from outside the Milky Way. 
But back to Earth. As the lithospheric emergence points for Earth's field, the magnetic poles tell us a lot about what is happening. They are supposed to wander a bit, but the south has wandered straight out of Antarctica, and the north is on a tear across the Arctic Ocean, dwarfing hundreds of years of movement in just the last few decades. This, concurrent with the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, sets a future of magnetic reversal for our planet. Our field peaked in strength 3,000 years ago, well inside the cloud. Its current decrease can be traced to around 1600 AD. Our magnetism began dropping at a higher rate in the 1800s and in 2000. NASA noted we'd lost 10% of the field compared to the 1800s. ESA updated that to 15% as of their 2010 findings. That's 10% lost over more than a century, and then an acceleration to hit that same 10% loss in only 20 years. Those are scary numbers, and you don't need to be a mathematician to understand how fast of an acceleration that is. Earth, Sun, and local cloud all provide a magnetic bubble and each is in the process of becoming less of a protective factor for our Earth. Those energetic sources from the galaxy and beyond will get an easier run through all three primary magnetic shields into the atmosphere, and we already know cosmic rays reach the ground and penetrate already. One could even argue that our being north of the galactic plane, heading further north and up, brings us out of the larger arm shielding and more exposed to the rest of the universe outside the galaxy, and I really don't know if there is any way to argue against that. But I will say that scientists' understanding our being up and going higher from the galactic plane came after this notation indicating we were sort of moving at Altair, so let's go ahead and take that further constraint from part two and move the x just slightly to the right. Altair would still be the primary thing we're heading at there, we're well within the common sense direction ring, and we now comport with the position of our solar system relative to the galactic plane, and are not in conflict with any known science. So let's review. Earth's weaker magnetic field is going to let in more of everything that comes by, sun, galaxy, and those far away. A weaker sun means less magnetic protection from the rest of the galaxy, and again, those far away. And as we come out of this local cloud, a large magnetic cocoon that leaves us with the fall of three major protective magnetic shields for our planet. Now, who likes whipped cream? Okay, so not to ruin this rosy masterpiece of universal attrition, but there is one other aspect of this that would be worth consideration at very least. Remember what the cloud is. Magnetic hydrogen. There's also a lot of oxygen in there, both in gas form and likely trapped in the rock, where well-understood charge exchange mechanisms have demonstrated the extraction of that oxygen from the rock in asteroids of our own solar system to combine with hydrogen into water. It can certainly happen here too, and there is likely those polar water molecules aiding the magnetic character of the cloud. Now what happens in your home, say during a humid versus dry day, or hot versus cold? You are most likely to get a static shock on a door handle when it's cold and the humidity is low. This is because there is less of a distribution and spreading out of that energy in the dry, sparse air. From the solar system scale down to Earth's magnetic field, it is difficult to tell exactly what some of the exact effects would be from entering an area of higher static potential. That would be the bubble. But somebody should probably be thinking about it. We'll see you for part four, the finale.